Hello, Insta loves. Hey, y'all. It's Rose, and it's my studio diary Wednesday. What's up? I have um, my tripod. I'm looking at it right now. Sorry, I'm off camera. Set up really precariously, so there may be a crash in the middle of the studio diary for today. And uh, welcome. I have it set up a little bit differently so that you can see a really big piece that I'm working on. Um, its size is about 30, I would say uh, 40 inches by 25 inches. Or if you're going height first, 25 inches by 40 inches. And um, this is a piece that I actually shared a video with you last week that I was dancing inside of the paper. The paper is um, pretty tall. I, I bought a roll of paper. I was gifted some art supply, uh, art supplies for Christmas, and I got a roll of paper that so that I can just continuously have paper, right? Have paper around. One of my biggest things. Um, my biggest like I can't make art today is I don't have enough substrates I have enough medium being these types of things right paint paint brushes pens um, but I run out of paper because I do a lot of big pieces and um, and as well I just uh, yeah, so for a while, so for a while you may have been noticing, or maybe you didn't notice, but I was paint. I've been painting on the back of paintings, so that is an interesting thing when you think about like having a body of work because now my pieces are two sided, um, which is okay. You can make up the rules that you want in your life. And speaking of making up rules that you want in your life, I want to address that um, I'm here and I'm live, and if you were watching any of my stories on Instagram from yesterday, you would have noticed that I've been having um, some interesting conversations with myself about worth. And what's fascinating about that to me is I teach this, this concept to most of my long-term clients who sign up with me for like my making and mentoring, my healing art sessions, or one-on-one -on -one work, is I, I teach this like uh, protocol, is what I call it, the worthiness protocol. And it goes through these cycles of checking in with yourself when you feel unworthy. And so yesterday I had forgotten that I created that <laughs> because we forget our greatest works when we're shrouded with uh, things that keep us from ourselves. So. Today, I'm not actually going to share it because I didn't prepare to share it with you. Um, it, is, I, it is on my blog, so it's a, it's a free item. It's not just like you have to pay me to receive this information. Um, so if you just go on rosecandela.com and search in the search bar that I made sure is on the top of my um, website because I love that on all websites to be able to search words. So if you just search worthiness, it'll come up. Hi, Nicole. Welcome. Um, and so, yeah, so one of the main tenets of the worthiness protocol is thinking about pace of your life. And one of the things, one of the other things that came up for me was that I was feeling out of sync with the rhythm of my life, meaning I was comparing myself. I was thinking about how I had shared something that was a paid offering which is still available um, it's a it's a collection of videos and curated information that I pulled from my paid programs into a really small uh, offering that I'm calling a vault of information so it's a really fun thing it's a really simple thing less than 45 minutes of content most of it you can just listen to um, for under $20 and no, nothing has sold yet. And it's partially because I haven't sent out a big email and I haven't done all the things. Um, so that's it. But it's also like, why am I do, why do I just think that that is the reason that I am worthy, right? Like if I keep producing, keep producing, keep producing. Now this came as an idea to me three months ago and I've sat with it and, and created it 
and made sure it was right. Whereas in the past, I would be like, oh, I have an idea, I'm gonna go chase it so that someone else doesn't get to it first <laughs> or so that I don't forget it or so that I can use this momentum to then launch the thing. And so I did it differently this time, but what still came up was this vulnerability of sharing something that I want to receive, uh, I want to receive from, right? I'm sharing it and I want to, I'm giving and I want to receive. And that's a really vulnerable place to be. And it's also um, not an easy place to be if you're online. There's so much information out there. So you have to play the game a little bit of like, making sure people hear you and see what you have to offer and also not getting discouraged, right? Um, there's no there's no room for discouragement because really what it comes down to at the end of the day is, are you serving from your heart? These are the questions I'm asking myself. Are you serving from your heart? Are you not pressuring people with manipulative marketing? No, I'm not doing that. A lot of people do that and you may not even notice it because they're really good at it. And it's also not that those people are manipulative or bad. They're just, they've just been taught to do certain things that are like playing on the human psyche. So I, I check myself, no, I'm not doing that. And I just trust and I realize the pace of my life is my life's pace. It's not anybody else's. So I may have these things that kind of sit there and are there and that's my work. And also, is not all that I am, right? I've written about that, that my business is a facet of me or that like cha-ching part of my business because this is also part of my business. It's like a branch off of the tree of who I am. So with that said, let's make some art. I am drinking a delicious cappuccino that my husband made for me. Well, he frothed the milk and he made the coffee too. I experimented, I'm experimenting with caffeine and like feeling alive. <laughs> I know this is weird. Anyway, so I'm having like a small cup. I, if, <laughs> who cares about this? I don't know, but I'm gonna share it with you. I'm having a really small cup in the morning, like between eight, seven and eight or seven and nine or whatever, like five ounces. And then I have another three ounces right about now, around 10. And it helps my helps me not crash with caffeine, and it also helps me to feel like um, there's a... I just got distracted by a bird out the window, but that there's not... Um, I don't know how to say it, because I it's not like I'm totally out of energy, but it helps me keep a consistent energy. So I think a couple of people are here, um, but if you've already popped off, come back on late. If you're coming back on later, uh, then you'll get to see this. I'm going to be working on a real, this really big painting that I was telling you about. And here I'm moving the tripod so that you can see. Oh, okay, y'all. Again, this may crash. I'm gonna add another sandbag to my tripod actually, so that there's some more weight on it. But um, as you're looking at that painting, it's uh, it's a piece that I've just been slowly, slowly working on. I have a really, I have a concept for it that I sketched out in a sketchbook and it's also in my head. And you'll, um, in the background, you'll be hearing Jason James Moore teach right now. So um, his student, I think, is playing at the moment. But so this is a scene that I've had in my mind that I also have had some inspiration from my son's art. Um, uh, the books that he's reading and the art in the books are fantastic, amazing. I mean, just like some illustrators out there are doing the work, y'all. So this will be this will be a landscape with a lot of things happening in it but right now i'm just adding the like base colors of this piece white sheet of paper i've already put down reds and blues kind of aqua t aqua colors teals um and carved out the mountains because it's literally what i see out my window right now it's what i see every day and it's often what i see in my mind's eye and i decided to uh, start 
start to draw them more in my paintings. So I'm gonna add a darker blue to the mountain area, starting in the, in the mountains that would be considered in the background. And this is a watercolor that I'm using that I mixed up in an old yogurt container with a little bit more water. So it was a pretty, um, uh, what's the right word? Thin color anyways. And then I added more water just so that it has a little bit more um, translucency. And here I'm, the mountains and the area around the mountains and, and my plan for this painting are going to be kind of the, a darker, darker part of the painting. So I will actually be adding like some charcoal color, um, some black on top of this blue. But with watercolors, one of the beautiful things is that you can layer. And then also one of the things that a lot of people like get a little intimidated by, I think, with watercolors is the idea that um, you can't erase. But you can actually physically erase. So you can actually manipulate the watercolors or you can add white on top. Um, there are some removal techniques that maybe one day I'll do a demo on that. So I'm gonna add more water to this watercolor so that it becomes even lighter as I move down into the foreground of the imagery, right? And I forget where I've read this stat, but like, um, uh, watercolor dries Gosh, I can't remember actually right now as so I'm trying to think of it, but like 50% lighter than it is when it's wet. So y'all stay tuned for what this looks like when it's dry. I'll share images. So maybe you're here because you're an artist or maybe you're here because you uh, like watching process or you consider yourself a creative but not an artist or you know you have creativity in you and you want to use it but don't want to use it for this like highly productive thing. <laughs> um, I write a lot about removing ourselves from the tyranny <laughs> of needing to show what we produce as a result of our time. Um, I haven't quite said it like that, but it's there. And um, I just want to welcome you if you're watching this still or later on and remind you that you are, you have this in you, right? Maybe not like exactly like this, but you have this capacity in you to create, to dance, to write, to make, to have that mindfulness around what you're, you know, what impression you're making in the world. I have a really good friend that I was talking to last night about process, about like this, the visible process of being an artist, meaning um, sharing your work and then also hearing what people think or don't think or believe that they have a better opinion on. And one of the, the things that I hear the most from women I work with or people I talk to uh, it's really universal is that um, there's like a, a collective pretty universal thing that happens in art school that some of us like may not even realize is damaging but it is and it's the oops the um the teachers rage sometimes um, on on students and critiques that are like not critiques they're really brutal um you know there's a place for editing um so to speak and there's a place for helping someone out by giving them some thoughts 
And I've had people do this for me with my work in a really beautiful, caring way. It really just comes from, like, it comes from a different place. And so I just want to name that if you've experienced something like that with your creations, that you're not alone. And that also, um, it's, it doesn't mean anything. Really all it means is it's a reflection of this teacher's own pain. And I'm sorry that you experienced it because you didn't deserve that. Nobody does. Okay, that's the blue of the mountains and I'm gonna leave right there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this phone off this very precarious, very, very uh, oddly positioned tripod so that it doesn't fall. So I am very appreciative of you for joining me today or joining me later. And I want you to um, just always remember that you have this in you, that beginning where you are is exactly the right place to begin. And no matter what in the world, no matter if you're creating a lot right now or nothing at all, or if you don't even know that you have that in you to do because of all the life things that come up, that you are worthy. Thanks, loves. I'll see you next week.